YouTube family, my name is Alicia English and welcome back to my channel. Okay, I was totally in the Christmas spirit this morning and it started to rain. I'm gonna move forward anyways with going and fixing this super ugly front entryway that drives me absolutely crazy. I hate it. I really would have loved to have a grand entry on this abandoned home that we purchased, but that is not the where they put the front door. There used to be on the other side of the house, a double door that we're aware of, but they totally revamped that side of the house, which leaves me with this really awkward walk in on the front porch. There's some bay windows on either side. And then it's like, bam, you're out your front door. When we moved into this place, the porch was actually falling over and it was crumbling and we really had to do a quick revamp. So we will be doing another vamp on the deck after, but this is the front entry door here, which was a really awful beige, yellow, brown color that the kids decided we were gonna do black for now. I think it does give it a little bit of a pop against our dark gray blue siding, but it is so boring. And just that awkward walk in drives me up the wall. It's super strange, never had a door like this, and it drives me crazy and I hate it. So I wanna do a little overhaul on it, but I don't have that much time. All of the supplies just came for our living room makeover, part two, times two, second time's the charm? I don't know what you wanna call it, but we have all the supplies ready to finish up behind our wood stove, which we've been burning all week that's been keeping us warm. We wanna get that completely done for Christmas. So I wanna do a revamp that's gonna take me a very little amount of time, give this a little bit of a makeover so it's a little more greeting when you come around this awkward corner. Because I don't have a lot of time and I wanna create some custom work, I'm going to head to my Cricut program to be able to make a few DIYs that will really revamp that front space. I'm really bored of regular welcome signs and so I wanna do something a little bit different. And since our homestead is located on this beautiful forest and we've been seeing so many forest friends and just really that Canadiana vibe we've been going with for our Christmas holiday decor, I wanna do that as well with a sign that says, come in and cozy up. Since the house is nice and warm and cozy now with the wood stoves going, so I found a board from my studio. It's approximately seven and a half inches by four feet long in case you're wondering the size. And I found this really neat woodland wrapping paper at the store the other day for just three dollars a roll and i loved how it had the gold accent with these woodland animals which is perfect because the kind of all the animals that we've been seeing in our forest and so i'm going to use some spray adhesive and attach this wrapping paper on the front and then i can head to my cricut program to add some words to the front i'm going to cut extra and then i can cut the side smooth once i get a big piece on it I haven't done it like this way before Oh, sorry, bear. I'm cutting you enough. <laughs> I think that the way they cut the paper. It actually aligns with the bottom. Pretty, well, unless it's backwards to your head. I'm going to use my Cricut cutter to cut the wrapping paper to the where the pattern is going to match up with the deer here. And I might need to add a little bit more glue once I get to that point, but I can see just the bottom of the deer head there. And so I'm going to try to cut it so it will match up. All right, we'll see makes a really nice clean cut. not gonna cut my table. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm gonna go very carefully along the edge. I'm pulling it up, I'm not actually pushing it to the table. So the reason I'm not just wrapping this in wrapping paper like a package is because I'm leaving the wood raw. That way I'll be able to flip it over and use it for the next season and not have to buy another piece of wood to create say a spring sign or something on the back. Oops. 
It's debating on whether or not I should do black because our house door is black or if I should do white. So because I'm going to create a really large project, I'm going to use the Cricut Smart Materials and I decided to use the permanent vinyl matte black. And because I'm not actually creating a stencil, I'm going to actually adhere the letters to the sign, which is reverse how I normally use it because I would typically make a stencil and then paint them on. But I like the idea that I can put this on and then just revamp this later if I want to, not wasting a piece of wood. So we're gonna head and print our design. So I'm now logged into my Cricut Design Space. You can see it says, Welcome Elisha at the top. And I'm going to put in, in the search bar here, my idea for this sign, which is come in and cozy up. I'm going to see what's available because there are always so many different designs that you can choose from. If there's something that you're interested in, you can use it. Like for example, if I was going to make horizontal sign, I would choose this come in and cozy up right here. And you can choose from 5,751 different examples of what you would want to do for that topic, which is so many options, but I'm being super picky. So I'm going to go up to new project and I'm going to put in the words that I want myself. And so I'm going to click text here and I'm going to write come and I'm going to hit enter after each letter so that I can create the vertical that I'm looking for. I'm going to do a plus sign instead of and. So there I have my design there. Come and, oh, and then you can edit if you have a different, uh, I put an uppercase by accident here. So I can go right back. And I'm not really that happy with the actual font that's here. And so I can go and click and make sure this is highlighted and go up to font here. And it was showing me Cricut Sans, which is a font that I like, but I've used it before. So I'm going to choose something different. And I already know that I really like the font a Lumberjack, which kind of goes with my forest winter vibe that I'm going for and I'm going to select it. And you can see that it quickly changed what I was doing to that type of font. And so I already previously had this set up and so I'm going to go to my projects and click the one that I already saved. I'm going to customize what I already did. And I have dragged my letters so that I can make them closer together because I'm working with a specific size that I want for my sign, which is 48 inches. And now I'm going to click make it and I'm going to use my Cricut Smart Materials only, which means I can cut without a mat, and click done. So it's going to ask me to review my artwork, and it's going to say that based on my layout, my material must be 31 centimeters in length. So it's just reminding me that I'm going to need quite a lot of my vinyl to be able to create this, and it's saying that I'm cutting without a mat, and it's letting me know what size. And I'm not going to mirror it, because I'm going to leave this, the lettering exactly the way that it's showing me on the screen. And I'm going to select what type of machine I'm going to use. So I also have a Cricut Joy and that is not plugged in right now. And so I'm now going to turn on my Cricut Maker 3 so that it will show me the device that I'm going to cut on. So it's found my Cricut Maker 3 and I'm going to select the material that I'm going to cut on, which is permanent smart vinyl. So I'm going to click that. And now I get to load my vinyl into the Cricut machine. So loading my materials into the machine, I have my matte black on one side, and then I have the Cricut grid on the back, which tells me what type of vinyl, and mine says permanent, and I'm choosing the matte black. I'm going to feed it into the machine, and push the double little arrow here. It's measuring the material length to make sure I have enough for my project. And I'm ready to hit the play button, go. Now that I have my letters printed out, I'm going to use my weeding tool and remove all of the vinyl that I don't need. Now I'm gonna work on my second DIY, which is actually a project I've wanted to do for a really long time. I have seen so many painted outdoor doormats and I haven't tried one and I'm just really excited because I picked up a jute rug that I think will be perfect for this project. 
And I want this to say English Homestead because I don't want this to be only for Christmas. I wanna be able to leave this out and then just change the decor for the next season. So I'm gonna head back to my Cricut Design Space. So because I want this to be a custom project and I'm not going to find what I want in the Cricut Design Space Studio here, I'm going to click New Project. I'm head in and going to click Text. And I'm going to write our last name, which is English and choose what font I'd like. And again, I'm going to match it with what I did. So I'm going to pick Lumberjack and it changed there for me. And now I wanna do another font where it's going to say the word Homestead. And again, I'm going to select it so that I can choose a different font for that. And I don't want the same font, so I'm gonna take away Lumberjack and choose something else. And there's so many different ones you can choose from. And I do need it to be a little bit of a thicker font because I'm going to be stenciling it on a textured rug. So I don't think that one will do, even though I really do like the font. That will work perfectly. Okay, so now I wanna make sure that I have the right sizes. So I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so I can see what letters. So I am 120 and I wanna be more like 90. So I'm going to shrink us down a little bit here. Oh, and that's 96, so that should do. And I'm going to move our last name over. And then I'm going to click Make It. I'm going to change the alignment so I can rotate it. That way I will be able to cut it in the length using my smart materials. And click Make It. Click Continue. It's going to find my Maker 3. We're going to follow the same steps. It's going to ask us what material we're going to use. So I'm just going to use my Smart Removable. I'm going to use this as a stencil, so I don't need to use my permanent vinyl. And I'm going to send it to the machine to cut. So the same as before, I'm going to re actually remove the lettering that I do want to have actually stenciled. So I'm going to leave the background in the middles of the letters and then take out the parts where I want my paint to go. So just the opposite. So this is my word homestead. I'm gonna put this word on first and then I will do the placement for the word English. <laughs> My arms aren't long enough. And I want this on the bottom right corner so that when you come up around our porch here, you can see it on that corner that's closest, somewhere along the bottom. paint over spills on the jute because it won't come off. So I'm going to use a combination of just a foam brush here and a little white makeup sponge. I'm not sure what's going to work best because I did choose quite a textured rug and so I'm going to be really careful not to get paint on anything else and work my way across trying to get as much of the texture as I can. And I'm just using a black, just a matte black chalk paint.
It dry and get it outside. Like that's gonna help. <laughs> <laughs> it's helping. Okay, so I need to lay this out and then let's work on our third DIY. So I'm going to make a really cute wreath for the front door and then I'm going to create a little banner on the wreath. I decided to not use the regular green typical wire wreath ring that I would normally use because I found this really cute one at the craft store for only $5 that I felt like would be a little bit more of a help for me to actually like weave things in and to use it season after season. So I love being able to reuse the materials and then transfer them into something else. That I'm not buying things every single season and being able to use upcycled things as well sometimes to put these together. And then being able to use my Cricut to cut customize them and make them look store-bought and one of a kind. <laughs> I don't use the lighter ever. <laughs> Swimmy. Stand in my shade. this one in or it's going to get fluttered out from the wind. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like someone actually lives here. <laughs> monogram with our last name English Homestead which we'll be able to use in another season and so being able to use my Cricut I was able to create three DIYs to make this front porch seem so much more inviting for our guests coming for the holidays although this year we don't have any guests because our family actually is in Ontario this year but I'll pretend like I need this to be really fancy for guests coming for Christmas and I love that I can now change these out and be able to use them for another season, lickety split using my Cricut. I wanna thank Cricut so much for being a huge sponsor for our channel. We've worked on multiple projects with Cricut this year and it has been my pleasure to be able to use the machine and show you guys just how easy it is to make custom decor for your home. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you too have posted pictures of what you've put on your front porch this season, make sure to join my Facebook group because we have a creative conversation going. I'll put the link in the description down below as well as the information for Cricut. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being part of my family and I love you and I will see you tomorrow.